Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people should be aware that this video may contain images, voices and names of deceased persons. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, where I practice painting portraits by painting the lost and stolen people of society and tell their stories. Around 38,000 people are reported missing every year in Australia. Of that 38,000, 1% of those cases go unsolved. Sometimes they disappear on their own volition, whether due to mental illness, dementia, domestic violence, drug and alcohol use, but some disappear under suspicious circumstances. In today's episode, I will be painting the portraits of five people who have gone missing around Australia and talking about their last known movements and any goings on in their life at the time of their disappearance. Some of the portrait videos are going to be very short because there is not a lot of information up on the internet that I could find. Um, but if you know more information, please put it in the comments below. And of course, call Crime Stoppers if you haven't already. Laura Harworth. It was a hot, sunny Saturday on the 5th of January 2008. Canberra had been experiencing above average temperatures. The Summer Nats Car Festival was held from the 3rd to the 6th of January 2008 at the Exhibition Park in Canberra. With the 5th of January being a particularly rowdy event, as noted in an article from news.com.au, they stated that the Federal Sex Discrimination Commissioner at the time, Elizabeth Broderick, was condemning the behaviour of the drunken mob at the Summer Nats Car Festival arguing that such conduct risk fostering an environment that may lead to rape and other forms of violence against women. The article goes on to say a drunken mob of up to 400 men overran the annual car festival, identifying women by their clothing before surrounding them and chanting, get your tits out, leaving one young girl to cower in tears and security unable to control them. Is this related to Laura? I'm not sure. Laura Haworth, then aged 23, was last seen on the 5th of January in 2008 at a friend's house in Queanbeyan in New South Wales. After telling her friend that she was going to work, Laura left the house in her red Mazda 121. Laura never made it to work that day, and she's not made contact with her family or friends since. Lack of contact is very out of character for Laura. She is a mother of two children, who were aged two and three at the time of her disappearance. They would be 18 and 19 this year, in 2024. They've gone 16 years of their life without their mother. As stated in an article by citynews.com.au, Senior Constable Pugsley has urged anyone who has any information surrounding Laura's disappearance, including those who were visiting from interstate at Summer Nath 21 to come forward and speak to investigators. She went on to say that, given Summer Nats was also taking place at Canberra at the time that Laura was last seen, there may be people who were visiting from interstate who may have information. On the 18th of January 2008, 13 days after her disappearance, Laura's vehicle was located parked at Canangra Court car park which is around a 20 minute drive from her friend's place. Police still have Laura's vehicle to this day, as they believe it holds the key to Laura's disappearance. Have you seen Laura Harworth? Laura is 178 centimeters tall. She has a slim build with brown hair and blue eyes. At the time of her disappearance, her hair was cut short and dyed red. Yu Lang Lin. Yu Lang Lin, aged 84, was last seen at about 8am on Friday the 15th of September in 2017 when he left his home in Cooper Court in Castle Hill to go for a walk after his breakfast. Mr Lin suffers from dementia and has become disorientated on his walks before. There are serious concerns for the safety and welfare of Mr Lin because of his age and dementia and Mr Lin does not speak English. Mr. Lin is described as being of Asian appearance. He is about 175 centimeters tall. With a slim build, he has short gray hair and brown eyes. 
He was last seeing a, a black jumper and long black pants. Stillian's family held serious concerns for his welfare. A search was carried out in the area, with many people in the community able to help police piece together some of Mr. Lin's last movements. There were also searches conducted in local bushland, but Mr. Lin has still not been found seven years later. Mr. Lin was last seen on Friday the 15th of September 2017. He was last seen in Castle Hill, New South Wales. The responsible jurisdiction is New South Wales. He was born in 1933. He would be 90 years old if he is alive today. He is 175 centimetres tall, with a slim build, grey hair and brown eyes. Veronica Philomena Lockyer and her daughter Adele Partridge. Veronica Philomena Lockyer and her infant daughter Adele Partridge were believed to last be seen on November 1998 in Midland, Perth. Adele was six months old at the time of her disappearance. Her last exact known whereabouts were in Meriden, Burakopan area in late 1998. Veronica, Adele's mum, was also known to frequent women's hostels and refuges throughout Perth along with communities in northern Western Australia. Police have conducted inquiries throughout Western Australia and interstate and have found no documentation or records of Veronica or her daughter Adele since late 1998. The following is the findings from a coroner's inquest held in 2023. Veronica Lockyer and her baby daughter Adele Partridge were last known to be alive in late 1998. They were not seen by any family members after the end of 1998. They were not, however, formally reported missing to police as family members in Port Headland and South Headland believed they were living in Perth and family living in Perth believed they were living in Port Headland and South Headland. In July 2018, Veronica's daughter, Donna Partridge, who is also Adele's older sister, reported her mother and sister as missing persons to police. This was after Donna made contact with her mother's family and became aware for the first time that Veronica and Adele were not living with them and had not been seen for 20 years. Police officers made inquiries and established that Veronica had been in a violent domestic relationship with Craig Partridge the father of Donna and Adele. The police investigation initially could not locate a record of Veronica or Adele after August 1998, when Veronica had contacted police for help leaving Craig. This raised a significant concern that Veronica and Adele may have been the victims of foul play. So a homicide investigation was commenced. Police identified a large number of potential witnesses, but unfortunately due to the lapse of time, Many were deceased or had limited memory of events. Public records were also difficult to access as many had moved from paper to electronic databases over that time. Nevertheless, further inquiries established that the last formal record of Veronica was a visit she made to South Headland Centrelink office on the 25th of October, 1998. The last formal record of Adele, who was only about six months old, was a visit to Headland Health Campus on the 1st of November 1998 and a record of a vaccination she received later that month in Meriden. The last person who was identified in the investigation as having contact with Veronica and Adele was Craig Partridge, who agreed to be interviewed by police on the 18th of January 2019. He admitted their relationship had been volatile and they had separated at the time of Adele's birth in April 1998, which had led to family court proceedings in relation to custody of Donna. However, they had then reconciled shortly afterwards and spent time in Headland and then Meriden as a family. Craig told police the last time he saw Veronica and Adele was before Christmas in 1998, when they had driven to the Center Point shopping center in Midland. They argued and Veronica took Adele and left, leaving Craig alone with Donna. He told police he never saw or heard from Veronica or Adele again, 
although he claimed to have tried to find her with the help of government officers over the years. Craig was recorded as taking Donna to hospital on the 27th and 28th of December in 1998. There was no record of Veronica or Adele being present at the time. Craig was then taken to hospital on the 11th of January 1999 in an acute psychotic state. Only Donna was with him at the time and Craig made some comments that he had separated from his partner and believed she had gone to a woman's refuge. He also told doctors that he had heard voices telling him to harm himself and his daughters. While receiving treatment, he then told doctors he had broken up with Veronica just before Christmas in 1998, and she had taken Adele with her and left him with Donna. Craig gave evidence at the inquest to a similar effect and denied having any involvement in Veronica or Adele's disappearance. The investigating officer also gave evidence and indicated that the evidence points to both Veronica and Adele being deceased. They most likely died around the last time they were seen in November or December 1998. No evidence could be found to support or disprove Craig's version of events. The coroner was satisfied beyond all reasonable doubt that both Veronica and Adele are deceased and that they died on an unknown date between 24th of November 1998 and 11th of January 1999. The coroner was unable to determine how Veronica and Adele died and the coroner made an open finding as to the manner of both Veronica and Adele's death. I just need to say here that Craig has obviously never been charged with anything so don't go pointing fingers. We don't know. We don't know what happened to them. Unfortunately, but um, hopefully one day we do have answers. Veronica. Missing since Sunday, November 1, 1998. Last seen in Perth. With a responsible jurisdiction, Western Australia. If alive today in 2024, she would be 59. She's around 162 centimeters tall, medium build, with brown hair and brown eyes. She has a physical impairment on the left eye and she walks with a limp. Adele has been missing since the same day, November 1, 1998. She was last seen in Perth and was born in 1998. She would be 25 years old today in 2024. She had brown eyes and brown hair. Alicia Carrington Alicia Carrington was also known as Ellie and in childhood known as Bert. Alicia is a transgender woman who is formerly known as Alan Ticehurst. Alicia was last seen by her family in August 1997 in the Laidley area, possibly heading to Darwin. Alicia was also known to frequent the Brisbane and Sunshine Coast areas. Alicia would frequently go for lengthy periods without contacting family. However, she would always attend important family events and has failed to do so. Alicia has been missing since Friday the 1st of August in 1997. She was last seen in the Laidley area in Queensland. The responsible jurisdiction for her disappearance is Queensland. She was born in 1975. She would be 48 years old today in 2024. She is about 180 centimeters tall with a slim build, brown hair and hazel eyes. She is tanned and she has First Nations background. She has a small Egyptian ank tattoo on the front of her neck off to the right in black. She has a red love heart tattoo with a banner across the front with script saying mum on her bicep. hieroglyphic symbol used to represent the word for life and by extension as a symbol of life itself. David Abui David was last seen on the morning of the 10th of July 2012 in the Canberra Civic area. David had been visiting friends in Canberra from Sydney. David had recently moved to Canberra from Sydney. He is known to frequent and stay at Bega and Alawa Flats in Canberra. 
and has friends and family in Sydney. Police have received information that David also uses the name Gabriel and or Malak. Police hold serious concerns for his welfare. David has been missing since Tuesday the 10th of July 2012. He was last seen in Canberra, responsible jurisdiction being the Australian Capital Territory. He was born in 1977. He would be 46 years old today in 2024. He's around 175 centimeters tall with a thin build, black hair and brown eyes. If you have any information about these missing people, no matter how small or insignificant it might be, or if you feel like someone else has reported it already, just report it again. Please call Crime Stoppers on 1800 333 000. I just want to say thank you for watching. If you liked this video, maybe you might like one of the other videos linked on the screen. And if you've been here before and aren't subscribed, please consider subscribing. Thank you. I'll see you in the next one.